What's up everybody, tomorrow we get season 21 of Apex named Upheaval where we'll get some broken moon changes, we'll get the new legend um, altar, as well as the usual changes to weapons, changes to legends, um, especially with this new uh, ability system they added in season 20, seems like they are constantly tweaking those and making changes. Before we go through the patch notes and what's changing, just want to mention that this will be linked down below but as well as this my twitch will also be linked down below i'll be live tomorrow afternoon evening ish playing altar as much as i can but if you want to see me try any of the change legends you just want to see altar or you want to see me mess around with any new possible metas changed weapons all that let me know in chat and i'll be happy to oblige and also my other socials are linked down below any follows interactions on any of those always make my day but let's go ahead and run through these patch notes so of course like I said, this will be linked down below, so if you want to watch the trailer, you want to read more closely, feel free, but I'm just going to really cover the important stuff. Of course, we have uh, Alter's Abilities, Passive Gift from the Rift. You can remotely interact with a death box and pull anything out of the death box. It just can't be a shield core. Then you have Void Passage, where you can create a portal passageway through objects like walls, uh, hills, uh, stuff like that, so you can get around people's cover you can push people that are locked up in a building and then our ultimates avoid nexus which is kind of like a wraith or ash portal mixed with revenant's old death totem where you can drop the void nexus and then you can go within a certain distance you can turn around look at it activate it and go back but it does create a portal that enemies can follow you back through so this is going to be what she looks like of course and then her upgrades are going to be level two ultimate cooldown is uh lowered by 30 seconds or void vision extended highlights and see health bars after exiting tactical that's another note about her tactical while you're in the void it will highlight enemies which actually comes into play in some changes and some other legends that we'll talk about shortly level three upgrades are external nexus void nexus no longer requires times out so you can just hit it and hit it and hit it and hit it Shout out your mom um then tactical cooldown plus reduces tactical cooldown by 10 seconds I don't think people really ever use these ultimate and tactical cooldowns very much. I'm sure with some of the legends they do, but I'm sure it's not a popular pick for a lot. Solos takeover. There's going to be solos from uh, May 7th to June 24th, which will replace the duos playlist. There's battle sense for you to detect nearby enemies. Weapons are already pre-kitted with attachments. And there's auto heal. I'm guessing that's just going to be health and not shields like the mixtape playlists. And then second chance mechanics, aka respawn tokens that will be available. Uh, then we have upheaval map rotation it's gonna be broken moon king's canyon and world's edge kind of a nightmare rotation for me world's edge and olympus are my two favorite and then storm point is in a tier of its own and then broken moon and king's canyon are below that but with these broken moon changes maybe i'll be wrong but i would have preferred like world's edge if you wanted to keep another big map in their storm point over king's canyon i'm not a big king's canyon fan but i'm also not an og apex player i started in like 13 so maybe this is just me yapping for nothing um, of course, I'm going to highlight the other blog post down below. So if you want more details on the broken moon map, I'll highlight my video talk where I mentioned the other blog post, and then I'll also link the blog post down below as well. Same thing with the apex artifact artifacts. I talked about in my last video. I'll link that blog post as well as that video, which is the same video as the uh, map update. Um, I'll link those down below. Now we're getting into the patch notes, the real important stuff that comes out today. In the care package, the wingman is now returning to the floor. The projectile size is reduced to how it was before the care package. Damage is reduced back down to 45. It was 50 in the care package. Skull piercer elite removed. Hip fire accuracy reduced. Now it can take the boosted loader, which is being bat added back into the loot pool. Uh, we'll talk more about hop ups in a second. And it no longer takes magazines as an attachment. So big nerf. Of course, the 45 damage and the projectile size were already pre-care package, so it's not really a nerf. It's just coming back to a state from before the care package. The skull piercer being removed is a nerf, and like I said, we'll talk about that more. And then the no magazine attachment is also a nerf. Uh, the Devo is now going into the care package. It has reverse hip fire, where sustained hip fire will actually tighten the accuracy instead of widening it, unlike other weapons. The damage is increased to 16. It was 15. The magazine size is increased to 54. It was 48 at purple. The reserve ammo is 324, which is a lot, but with the Devo's fast fire rate, maybe it's not too much. And empty reload time is significantly reduced. Um, I believe since it's in the care package, it will also come with the turbocharger attached automatically. Gold weapons this season are going to be the Nemesis, the Triple Take, the Peacekeeper, the Prowler, and the Longbow. I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for that Prowler. But other than that, Nemesis is like my third AR. Um, Maybe fourth if you count LMGs. I've been liking the Spitty a lot, actually. Uh, triple take, eh, 
I, I don't really care about these gold weapons too much. The longbow, once again, skull piercers out, which we'll talk about. So longbow, pfft. guaranteed weapons out of lupins. Now all lupins opened by an unarmed player will always contain a weapon. So if you don't have guns, you will always get one, no matter what, uh, out of a lupin. Now, Devno, bringing knuckles to a gunfight isn't the most engaging gameplay, so improving weapon acquisition consistency in the early game when completely unarmed, opening a bin will guarantee at least a low-tier weapon. We've all been there, especially when you drop in hot and you land on a pill next to somebody and they land on just a loot pile or another pill, they get a gun, you don't, and you're just trying to punch or run away and survive. Uh, retrieving banners from death boxes will no longer lock the player out of critical gameplay actions running shooting punching and reviving will all break out of the banner collect animation while still registering as a successful collection players can immediately interact with a death box a second time while the animation is playing or continue holding the interact button to collect and enter a death box in one flow but don't loot your homies uh death boxes even or even your randoms death boxes unless it's about to be swallowed up by zone it's just bad um I'm not going to read a lot of these dev notes, by the way. It's something else that you can read for yourself. Um, survival items and support bins. Survival items now only spawn from a support bins tray if a team is in need. So if you opened up the support legends bins, the one with the blue cross support symbol, the uh, survival item could pop into the like bottom tray that only you can open at any time. Now it's only if, you, if your team needs one. So like mobile respawn beacon when you have allies eliminated. Now, here's the weapon nerfs. The 3030 Skull Piercer hop up removed. They said it's been dominating for too long. Charge rifle ADS recoil improved and stabilized. They said the high risk was too risky for the reward. Uh, longbow Skull Piercer hop up removed. Barrel stabilizer attachment removed. Base recoil significantly improved. Where I believe the uh, recoil will be as if you had a purple barrel stabilizer now. Projectile gravity reduced. So that's bullet drop. ADS in and out time reduced. So ADS time or ADS speed sped up. The triple take now takes the boosted loader. Hop-ups, as I mentioned, we talk about skull piercer removed and boosted loader added, including being added to the triple take. One-time digital optic, or the digi, is now fully removed. Legends, Ash's arc snare can now be uh, can be thrown with her left hand. So if you're popping a heal, want to shoot your gun, whatever, you can still throw the snare, which you weren't able to before. And so now it won't stow weapons or interrupt your heals while uh, launching. The phase breach inspired by alter tech is what they said i said we were mentioning this later will now highlight nearby enemies while you're traveling through the void ballistic the whistler damage is up to 10 from 5 upgrades the care package insight upgrade was removed and now it's a slingshot where if you select slingshot on your uh upheaval level 2 uh or sorry that's the season on your level 2 upgrade now when your armor upgrades the gun upgrades i believe so that would mean it would automatically make your sling weapon pur blue with blue attachments and then when you level up to purple armor it'll go up to purple attachments that makes ballistic more interesting because now you would have three kitted weapons as you level up your armor but it's just, he's just still not useful enough for people to really use bloodhound beast of the hunt cooldown was increased to four minutes instead of three I don't know if that was necessary. At least go 330. Bloodhound's not super used. Maybe they're trying to get him to be used again. He might be used in solos. Um, Nox with alt active no longer extend duration. So he definitely got nerfed for his alt, but his upgrades, the tactical cooldown upgrade was removed. I told you, people really aren't using those. And that's what they're removing these abilities really based on is how much people are using them. Uh, Taste of Blood is now added. Buffed HP gain on Nox to 50 was 25 uh new long hunt sorry that's the new ability nox extended beast of hunt duration so now you can choose long hunt or taste of blood taste of blood gains 50 health on nox while the long hunt nox extend the beast of hunt duration so that was the alt so they're essentially nerfing the base alt and saying well you can choose an ability if you want that nerf undone which i i think that i i just don't like those changes personally but i'm not a bloodhound main so i don't want to speak for bloodhound mains i just personally don't think that's a good change um catalyst piercing spike cooldown decreased to 20 was 25 and long cast upgrade integrated into base tactical so they did remove the long cast where the range of throwing the spikes could be increased with one of your upgrades now that's just base which i think is good but that is a buff to her q Dark Veil length increased to 45 meters. It was 40, so another buff for Catalyst. They're kind of just reverting changes they made last season. Um, upgrades, or technically this current season, so tomorrow. Upgrades, Long Cast has been removed from the upgrades. Long Veil has been moved down to level 2, which means you can increase the length even more. Uh, new Feral Doors, a new ability that you can also choose at level 3, where not only can you 
uh, put ferrofluid up in place of a broken door. Now you can rebuild broken doors that have been completely destroyed, and they will also have the ferrofluid barrier on them. That's huge for locking down buildings, and as people are trying to push you and they destroy your building, being able to rebuild doors. Catalyst, if she wasn't back in the meta recently, which I'm pretty sure she was, she's definitely going to be in the meta, especially in higher ranked games and in pro play. The fact that the veil is longer, the piercing spikes can be thrown farther, and you can rebuild doors completely with Feral Fluid already on them. She's going to be huge, especially ALGS end games, high ranked end games where you want to be able to lock down a space. Caustic gas damage and slow now stops immediately after Caustic squad is eliminated. I personally think that's a change that should have always existed. Um, but also, you don't get credit for enemies being killed if your team's fully eliminated. So this is more of, hey, we're not going to annoy non-caustic players as much. Um, gas damage ramps from 4 to 10 max now. It was base 5 up to uncapped damage. Um, and damage on knock players is now down to flat four. So they really nerfed Caustic in this. I didn't think it was needed. I know Caustic's pick rate has gone up, but he's not crazy. I didn't think he's crazy overpowered or crazy meta. Or just annoying. And now he's less annoying um, and weaker. Conduit's Radiant Transfer can no longer target a Revenant while Ford Shadow is active. That's a great change. When Revenant activates Ford Shadows, any temporary shield generation ends immediately. Revenant will keep any temporary shields generated before activating his ultimate. So this is kind of more of a Revenant nerf. But it's really a, like, team comp nerf. Like, people were using Rev Conduit together for that overpowered reason, and now that's not going to be the case. So, I would assume this would make Rev's pick rate go down a little bit, but not really Conduit, because this isn't a true Conduit nerf. Uh, upgrades, battery collection removed. Uh, battery collection was seeing the battery count on death boxes. I recently started playing Conduit a lot recently, and I anytime I accidentally selected that, because I was trying to do too many things at once, I was so bug bummed that I picked that instead of increasing the jammer range, which still I don't think is a great upgrade. I think conduits upgrades are so so. And now they have new bat pack where you can stack up to three shield batteries per inventory slot. Doesn't stack with gold backpack. This is an iffy one because if you find a gold backpack, you're gonna just obviously pick the bigger jam upgrade, which I would probably still pick anyways because. One extra bat's nice, but you just hope you can loot a gold backpack, and I just think being able to lock down an area a little more is better. We'll have to see how it feels when it plays. Personally, I don't know that I would pick bat pack, just like I didn't really want to pick battery collection, but it is definitely better than battery collection. That's unquestionable. Crypto Neuralink network traffic upgrade now integrated into base kit. Squad count banners are now visible anytime the drone is in a deployed state. So if your drone is out, you can still see the squad count banners. It should, it, before you had to be like in the drone, now the drone just has to be out. Upgrades to level 2, Tactin ultimate cooldowns are removed, network expansion moved down to level 2, and new quick ping improved drone handling, faster excel and decel. Uh, now upgrades, level 3, new satellite imagery, drone scan persists persist for an additional 1.5 seconds. New hackathon, cut the drone cooldown in half, gain a speed boost anytime he uses his alt or the drone is destroyed. I mean... How many people are really using crypto? I'd be honest, I can't really talk too much about these changes because, like, crypto's a legend I just have zero interest in at all. A lot of these legends that I don't even really play, I can at least speak on, but on crypto, like, doesn't even exist in my brain. Any Anytime anyone picks him as a random, one of my randoms, I'm like, oh yeah, he exists. I think nothing about crypto at all other than you. Um, unless you like grabbing banners from far away and reviving from far away. Other than that, pfft, uh, fuse upgrades big bang is removed new ringmaster gang gang access to ring consoles scar tissue simplified and buff damage mitigation to remove lingering burn effects take a flat 20 damage when crossing the mother load instead of 37 50 percent of 75 hp time reckless fixed explosive damage mitigation not being applied on continuous knuckle cluster hits should only take about 32 damage from a full knuckle cluster now with reckless okay i mean the ring console thing's nice. The big bang, see ordinance through walls and death boxes. Another kind of useless thing, like conduit being able to see the bat count in boxes, just kind of useless. And ring console, I like it's kind of themed around how he has the ring with his alt. Um, so he's the ring master. And I always like having these legends be able to gain access to ring consoles or the uh enemy beacons. I can't the I should know as a vantage main what those are called off my head, but I'm blanking. But you know what I'm talking about. Newcastle mobile shield throw animation speed increase. It's good because it's very slow. Castle wall will now destroy incoming projectiles headed towards the front of the wall while energized. It will not destroy projectiles fired from behind the wall nor bombardments from other legends ultimate projectiles. 
So if you're Newcastle and you throw down your alt wall and it's got that electric charge around it, it'll act like the pylon for um, for Watson where it'll destroy grenades and stuff, but it's not going to act like the pylon to where the pylon can counter uh, Bang's alt and Gibby's alt. It's not going to do that, but it sounds... Um, and, oh, and it says no bombardments, so I think Maggie's ball will still be destroyed by it. I don't know. But once that charge goes away that goes away so it's not a crazy buff but it is a very interesting buff that i think really does make newcastle more of a viable legend um and i do like that unlike watson's gen when you're just standing next to it it still will take out your projectiles or your throwables or whatever um and this wall won't do that so when you're on the team behind the wall that um that's a very good change for his wall uh, upgrade stronghold increased energized duration to three minutes was 2.5 minutes it's a long time to be energized um newcastle's a really strong character he's just hard to play but if you want a good defensive character that has a lot of team um team abilities because all of his abilities really do help the team uh, try learning newcastle i personally don't want to learn him but he's a very good legend uh upgrades reckless remove mad hops moved to level two thick skin now level two and level three updated take five less stim damage to reflect that it can be selected twice <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me um so now we look at the abilities before worth thick skin minus 25 percent stim damage and reckless minus 50 percent explosive damage now it's mad hops gaining extra launch pad charge which was in uh level three and thick skin take five less stim damage i think that they should have left the reckless it makes sense kind of with his lore to use grenades he uses grenades to launch himself but whatever and now level three mad hops was down to level two and now it's thick skin where you can add in another five damage they need to rework octane or something because even his abilities are just boring and kind of meh um the airborne agility change directions with launch pad double jump i mean if you're on mouse and keyboard you can already do that octane needs some kind of rework or at least his abilities do uh watson upgrades falling star pylons will stop spawning arc stars when their squad is eliminated Split circuit no longer reduces shield regen capacity. Wraith into the void and dimensional rift. Nearby enemies will be highlighted for players traveling through the void. So just like Ash, that's what I was alluding to when we talked about Alter being able to ping enemies in the void. That's what we I was alluding to. Both of those legends now being able to do that. Uh, Broken Moon, Shattered, new POIs, Breaker Wharf updated, new rotations to switch things up and keep squads on the move. Added new possible ring console, survey beacon, and crafter spawn locations to World's Edge and Stor Storm Point, which isn't even or split and further evened out the probability of a prop spawning at any specific location world's edge added possible ring console spawn locations to mirage Trois and survey camp added possible survey beacon spawn locations to survey camp and, the, and geyser storm point added possible crafter spawn locations to command center added possible survey beacon spawn locations to the wall and unnamed pois north of checkpoint and at the edge of the map east of Stormcatcher. modes solos uh now like i said taking over duos for six weeks 50 players second chance respawn automatically respawn once you die in the first four rounds second chance converted to evo if unused by round cutoff i don't like this i mean it's it's like playing resurgence on call of duty which i i like on call of duty uh i like br better right now i like that on call of duty i don't like that in apex um or at least just create like a full resurgence mode like shrink a map down or something and have resurgence but whatever i'm just glad that there's going to be a solos uh i'm super looking forward to that Battle sense HUD indicator where enemies are within 50 meters. Auto heals health regenerates out of combat. Auto heal starts after each kill, so it is health regen, not shield regen, like I figured. Ad additional adjustments to loot pool, circle sizes, and round times to accommodate solo play. Mixtape lockdown added to rotation, zoo station, and monument. Mixtape map rotations, default rotation. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and skip through this. I, I don't think anyone really cares too much uh ranked all players in a pre-made squad must be within three rank tiers of each other or they will not be allowed to progress to matchmaking no tuning changes to be made to rank scoring for the launch of upheaval i'm actually pretty happy with how the rank system currently works uh it's a lot better than the last couple seasons for season 20 season reset where you ended your last season ranked will determine an upheaval if you stayed in rookie you'll just be set to one rp everybody else is going down to bronze four whether you were pred whether you were silver whether you were bronze three you're going down to bronze four Split timing. Split 2 will take place at the same time as the point one patch, not a week after like in previous seasons, aka Season 20 when they had to delay it. Upheaval ranked rewards. Uh, your end of season rewards will not be determined by the highest ranked tier you achieve during the entire season. Split rewards. Your season end reward badge will be animated if you match or surpass your Split 1 rank in Split 2. If you do not achieve this, you will get the normal version of the badge. 
World systems improved end ring generation system. Bug faces equipping an evac tower. Mobile respawn beacon will no longer close the inventories of all our players in the match. Didn't know that was a thing. Firing range fixed some edge cases where legends change was available when shouldn't be. Fixed occasional crash when interacting with an enemy's crafted banner. Mischief medic no longer pierces highlighted healer. Olympus players can no longer enter exit vault without a key. Survey beacons and ring consoles should now be pingable again from the map. When hip firing the Devo, it will now properly track its reticle. Legends Ballistic Duration of Speedy Whistler restored in 2 seconds. Bloodhound Passive Markers no longer appear for teammates not on player squad. Players can once again be scanned by two Bloodhounds at the same time. Catalyst Fix Dark Veil not changing for short duration of spawn. Crypto Recall Audio when the drone is far away from you is audible once again. Maggie Remove Drill Burn Audio for players in the area of effect while phased. Removed Race Shadows from the Void if you aren't playing as Wraith. And Watson Resolved Bad Spawn Points for Arc Stars Generated from Falling Stars Upgrade. And then finally, quality of life, because we're not going to read the graphics stuff down here. Uh, quality of life, additional security improvements. Thank you, Destroyer2009, for making them get on that. Airdropping replicators now project a beam upwards as they are descending to help differentiate them from other airdrops. Back by popular demand, you can re at the end of pubs, BR, and mixtape matches. Now, they just need that in ranked, but I mean, I guess I get why not. Ballistic can now add any locked set weapon into the sling where it will be converted to proper lock set tier and restored to its original state when being moved out. Red tier stone will allow. Deathbox flyers option to automatically ping the location of Deathbox will be prompted when knocking it from a flyer's grasp. Uh, improved choice of consumables that are auto selected when either reaching full health, full shields, or when dropping your last selected item. The new choice should move more intelligently, select shield consumables, or prioritize syringes for quick healing. These changes were made to help new players have more optimal outcomes. Improve use interactions with doors when self res is available. Map spawn audit for all mixtape modes, phase runner, habit, thunderdorm, Zeus, and, and Zeus station. Upgrade to the latest version of easy anti cheat. Thank you for that. Uh, cheaters have been bad. I'm not great at spotting Apex cheaters, and even I've been super sus of people this season. Pings should now go through all translucent surfaces like windows. Thank you. Dude, that's so frustrating. Warzone does that stuff too. It's so annoying. Players can now request for grenades, arc stars, frag grenades, and thermites. Work similar to healing items, hold the grenade button, open the ordnance wheel, hover on an ordnance item, select ping to request. Thunderdome, airdrop location adjustments, control, move C capture point to landing pad. Okay. Um, adjusted spawn attached to B capture point. Thunderdome is the worst mixtape map. But that's everything. Uh, it was a lot. It's a long video. So if you stuck through it all, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, notification bell so you know when more this goes up. I'm trying to shift more into... Uh, apex content as well as going uh, upping my warzone content like i used to so make sure you hit that notification bell if you enjoy either of those games um so you know so you can be first to know the new information um now let me know down in the comments below what you think of the season i like some of the legend changes um i think changes octane uh highlight how boring octane can be um that's one thing that sticks out to me i like the weapon changes I have no feeling sword skull pierce being removed because I hate the 30 30. Um, I hate the long bow and I'm awful with the wingman as much as I do like it. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours down in the comments below. And like I said, this will be linked down below. The other blog posts will be linked down below. My other video will be linked down below. My Twitch will be linked down below. Um, if you want to come watch me be a bot sometimes, sometimes be really good, sometimes be a bot, or you have any questions about the new season, you want to see anything. And finally, all my socials are linked down below. Uh, if you want to check any of those out, short form content that kind of mirrors this as well as some clips and Twitter's just me um, being me. So with that all being said, I will see you on World's Edge, King's Canyon, and brand new Broken Moon. Get frying. Have a good day. Bye.